I think it is important to make school fun. And when school is fun, you don't get kids waking up in the morning and say, do I have to come to school again? So we embrace technology because it helps us make learning more engaging. I believe that when kids are engaged, when kids are interested, that's where learning takes place. The kids are really from a very different world now. And really to reach out to the kids, you need to be savvy with technology. If you're not savvy with technology, you're going to lose the kids in the school. Nian Secondary School is a typical school in Singapore where we take in students with different academic abilities and we have about 1,512 students in this school and, I, and they all come from the neighbourhood. We get students from the age of 13 to about 16. Many students want to come to this school because uh, of its strong uh, programme, especially in uh, the use of ICT, Infocom uh, technology. And the teachers here are known they produce uh, very good teaching materials and uh, very innovative teaching ideas to engage the students in the classrooms. In the early 1990s, the teachers really are the monopoly of knowledge and they are the one that comes to the class to deliver that knowledge so that the students can acquire them. But today, uh, knowledge is no more a monopoly among the teachers because students can get knowledge from a myriad of sources. And hence, the role of the teacher today is facilitation. You know, that means facilitate students where they could get the right knowledge, how they could synthesize them, how they could discern the information that they get. Velocity is defined as the rate of change of distance with time. Is it true or false? So I want you to tweet me your answer. So this is how you tweet. This is the format that you need to tweet. So you put in at sign, vote by tweet one. We look at technology very meaningfully and we see how can we leverage this technology to make a very significant impact in the classroom instruction. I'll give you an example. In a classroom of 40, it is really impossible to get 40 students to ask 40 questions at one go. When we use the instant messaging tool, we open 40 windows to 40 kids. They could ask 40 questions at the same time and the teacher could see their thinking on, uh, on the technology tool that they use. And kids get more excited because they are using the tools that they are very, very good in using, not just the pen and the pencil. Okay, so same thing, we will have uh, two students to every terminal. If you have any issues with the terminals, raise your hand and I'll come to you. Okay? Oh, let's go. What the students are doing is they are currently exploring this Second Life art gallery uh, which the school has set up. Okay, and the works that are shown in this uh, gallery is actually made up of uh, local works that have been done by local artists. First of all, the online platform is very, very useful because uh, it's something that really engages the students. They will be chatting with one another Okay, about the works using the elements of art, principles of design, as well as uh, reading other students' comments as well. If they would like to, they can actually leave notes uh, for other students to read. The Web 2.0 world with Wiki, with your Facebook, your blogs, you find that, uh, that it's a very participatory culture. It calls for a lot of collaboration. They no longer become just a consumer of knowledge. They actually produce knowledge. What are the important things that you have discovered so far? The election they are and the tendency to lose their I find that students themselves are often on Facebook. So instead of looking at them and at looking at Facebook as a distraction, I would rather use it to engage them. They even like when they're stuck with certain question, they, they post up the question to the class and you see responses and they are learning from each other, which I think it's um, better because there's more motivation, intrinsic motivation for them to learn rather than, um, okay, I tell you to do this and I tell you to do that. 
I would say that the teachers in this school, myself included, we, we scan the globe for best practices. is watching a model lesson that's been run by my colleague here and the whole process of uh, us watching the lesson is to uh, gain uh, some kind of uh, points from her lesson and also to provide our feedback we discuss it to come up with a better lesson because definitely learning grows with a sharing and communication and there's definitely a scope for improvement for any lesson Alright, first of all, I understand that uh, the purpose of this Skype session, we want to confirm the suitability of the pretest. Is this the common agenda that we have? Yes, the common agenda. Okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay. Maybe we can think about it, if, if we give it to the children as is, um, some of them might actually come up with the idea of the steepness of the slope. There's always something new to learn. You're never at a standstill, you're always uh, moving ahead, pushing boundaries, trying to discover new things, new ways of teaching. So uh, it's exciting because even if the pedagogy is sound, there's always a technology that's always challenging us and, and we always have to find new ways to connect with the kids and to challenge them. So I think we do look at how the world has changed and teaching cannot stay stagnant. So the teachers recognise the fact that they cannot teach the same way they were taught 10, 20 years ago. That they have to be very adaptive in their methods. And when they do that well, they know they are going to engage the kids. And when you engage the kids, that is where real learning takes place.